Welcome to the Electric Series 1. So it's a little bit cold um, to be doing a video in a soft top Land Rover like this, but um, albeit we've just finished this Series 1, um, it's an 80 inch, so it's a proper old one, um, and it is now completely electric. It did have a full restoration before it came to us, so it's pretty, pretty smart, pretty special. You can see nice fancy seats, um, and underneath is absolutely beautiful, which we'll show in a minute. Now we're gonna go for a quick drive, um, so just to show how this one works and the little differences between the other ones. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk through under the bonnet and actually something in the back in this one. Um, now this car has a Series 2 gearbox in it, um, so it all feels original, but it's a little bit stronger under there um, compared to the Series 1 boxes, which were inherently a bit rubbish, as I've learned on my own car. Um, this car doesn't have a gear selector, so no forward reverse gear selector like a lot of them. We actually just use the gear stick for that. Keeps it a little bit more authentic. Um, it's what the client wanted to, to sort of keep that whole Land Rover feel, and really in here, if you were just to sit in here, you'd have pretty much no idea that it was electric. So, I'll stick it in third, as per usual. Handbrakes off, original pedals, and let's go. Now, I've actually got a Series 1 um, from 1952. It's red, and it's got a London taxi diesel in it. And I must say, it runs on two cylinders, and it's absolute crap. So. This is sort of the future of, of a Series 1 and, and building this car has really made me think I've got to do my own one. It's absolutely lovely to be completely silent um, as you're driving around because this car really, you know, it goes to the pub and back, it maybe pots us down to the beach. You're never really on A roads, you're never really on anything busy. It is just tracks like this, so in the silence, I think it's beautiful, especially around this part of Sussex where, where our workshop is and, and where we do our work. And um, the client actually lives about 30 miles down the road, so perfect. So I want to show the increase in power that we put into these vehicles to make them actually usable on modern roads. There'd be nothing worse than being in an old series one and not being able to get away from the line and having a line of traffic behind you or being worried pulled out at junctions. We're in third gear. You can imagine having a diesel and starting in third gear, you'd burn your clutch out, but we're on a little bit of a hill here. I'll put my foot down and you'll see we accelerate nice and quickly. We're not on Tesla speed here but it's a hell of a lot more than it used to have, and really, that's all we want. Um, if we needed a little bit more, we could just put it into second, and if we wanted a little bit less, I can even put my foot on the clutch and change her into fourth. It's all exactly how it used to be. Um, all we're doing is turning the original gearbox, which then turns the rest of the drivetrain. Really crucial in keeping the cost down, keeping it simple, and we really don't need to do 0-60 in four seconds in something like this. Maybe in something else that we're building in the minute, but you'll have to stay tuned for that one. Another important thing to think about is reliability. I can get up in the morning and I know that this car will go. It's not going to be, the, the, the starter motor's not going to not turn or it's not going to be seized or it's not going to need fuel pumping into it or whatever. You're going to turn the switch and it's going to go. And that reliability is what we need in the modern day. Imagine you're you know, about to take the kids to the school in the back and it doesn't start. Suddenly the kids are late for school. That is why this car has gone electric, um, because it's going to start every time and we're going to be able to potter around worry-free. So let's go and have some fun. I was just driving up here when we were doing a couple of shoots of the camera out of the car, and as I came to turn around, something pretty funny. And I'm going to show you that we're in, the, we're in the rural farms, farmland of Sussex. And if we pull in here, we don't even scare the sheep. Because the sheep can't even hear us. Bleh. Hello, sheep. <laughs> So 
So now that we've had a drive of the vehicle, let's have a quick look around it and explain what we've actually done and what's been done before. Um, so as you'll see, it's a 80 inch um, and it's fully, fully restored. Okay, so this, this car was found in a barn somewhere um, in a pretty sorry state, I think. Um, and before it was electrified, it's had a new bulkhead put in, it's had the entire sort of running gear, differentials, um, everything pulled out and restored powder coated and then put back in. So that's things like the chassis has been done. The internals of the diffs are actually Range Rover parts um, just to make them stronger. It's got a series two gearbox, again, stronger than the, the original series one ones, as I know very well um, in my own series one, because they're rubbish. Um, and then obviously things a bit more cosmetically like full new Exmoor trim seats to make it look really quite fancy. Um, it's, it does have new doors and a new rear door. Um, as you can probably tell by the little bit of a funny patina on them, but the real patina is lovely. Um, as is the whole car really, you know, um, freewheeling hubs at the front is really gonna help with the rolling resistance and therefore the range. Underneath it is spotless. Um, so that's the car. Obviously it's great to have a, uh, you know, a really strong example before we start. Um, you know, a really beautiful car, nice paint, nice everything before we actually do the, the fancy bit, the electrification. Um, so now let's talk about the electric side of it. Um, we'll start from where you put the power in. Because Series 1s don't have a fuel sort of filler hole in a normal place like there or there on the laser cars, we've put the, the um, charge socket there in the PTO hole, which seems to be quite nice. Um, up the front, we've got five Tesla Model S batteries giving this 26 and a half kilowatts in a range of anywhere between 60 and 80 miles, depending on how you drive it. Those five batteries are linked up to a AC51 motor, which is by um, HPEVs. And that goes into the original, well, the original drivetrain, apart from the Series 2 gearbox, and then into obviously the four-wheel drive system. So you've still got two four-wheel drive, you've still got high-low ratio, all the same. Um, and this car, you don't even choose a forward or reverse gear. You literally just put it in third to go forward or you put it in reverse to go backwards. Um, and then when you're driving along, if you go on onto an A road or whatever, you can put your foot in the clutch, put it into fourth and off you go again. Um, so that's sort of a, a brief outline of, of what, what this electric, this now electric Land Rover. Um, so let's give you a closer look under the bonnet and um, in the back. Now you may be thinking we don't usually show you the back of the vehicle when we're doing these videos, usually everything's up the front. Now the reason we've done the back on this one is because the front is actually quite boring. All the interesting stuff is up the back here. So we're actually gonna start at the front. Come with me. Um, so looking at the, the front grille of this car, you'll notice that the inverter is behind the grille there. Now that's crucial because that's actually an air cooled part. Usually we put water cooling through it, but we thought we'd try air cooling on this time. Um, and under the front here is the five Tesla battery battery pack, okay? So that's all that is up the front here. Usually if you notice from our other videos or our other pictures, we've got like a, a big casing over the top here, which has got the um, inverter in it there. It's got the BMS, it's got all kinds of things the contactor circuit, for example. In this, obviously it's a series one, so we're starting with a much smaller area, but we still wanted to get the five batteries in it. So we've had to relocate some things to the back. So all we've got is two batteries laying like this, one, two at the back, three at the front there, a big disconnect, a couple of um, plugs to, to send some wiring back to, to the back and to the inverter, um, and then just a, a data cable section um, here. So. The front's actually pretty boring. Um, so let's come and have a look at the back where the fun really happens. Now, this is where things start looking a little bit different and where things have a little bit changed in our design. Um, so, oops, if we open this up, this is actually where the majority of the wiring sits, the majority of the gubbins, like the BMS is there, the charger is there, that's the DC-DC, we've got the contactor circuits, fuse boards, a whole load of 12V wiring, as well as the, the cell tap wires, which are actually going up to the front. So you notice going forward are four HV cables, and this is the, and the cell tap. So, so going to, to check on the voltage and the current of every single cell in the battery pack. 
Um, this box is now sitting in a sort of void in between the chassis rails. If you imagine the chassis rails are about there underneath, there's a bit of space there, which we thought is best utilized, um, especially in a car that's sort of a little bit smaller like the Series 1. Um, now we're going to start implementing this onto our, onto our next builds on Series 1s, 2s, 3s, and possibly even Defenders, even though Defenders have a little bit added space at the front. Um, but really nice, sits in there, comes down flush. When we dog that down, now you may want to put a carpet over it, you may just want to leave it as it is so you can quickly lift it up and, and show your friends what's in there or go to shows or whatever it is. Um, but it really looks fantastic and sort of cleans the design up a little bit rather than trying to cram everything in the front, which is always the worst nightmare of the converters. Like I was like, we're building a Fiat 500 at the minute. Where the hell do we put everything? Now, this is a really easy solution that makes it much simpler, gets things out of the way for us. Okay, so that's the two main components of the car. Let's have a quick look at the interior. Um, you'll notice that there's actually nothing that looks non-original almost. Um, this is the, 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 the other design change where I was saying we don't choose drive or reverse on, on a gear selector. It's Theoretically, it's always in drive. We just put it in reverse on the gearbox or third on the gearbox, okay, depending. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty nice car. Thank you very much for watching. Um, the, the owner is actually on, it, on his way to pick it up now um, where it's gonna go and enjoy the, the Sussex countryside. Uh, probably a million runs to the pub, to the beach, with the dogs, with the kids, whatever it may be. So thanks for watching, see you next time.